morning and welcome to worship at St. Mary's Episcopal Church, Fleeton, Virginia. We welcome you this morning and hope that you will join us uh, for this service of the Liturgy of the Word. We'll begin in just a moment to take a moment to gather our thoughts and prepare for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, 
You are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merit and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now for the lessons. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and troubled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. For God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The word of the Lord. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. 
Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get domination over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these are I come to I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to do what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, 
dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized the slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scripture, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore tell you, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruit of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our preacher this morning is from the Diocese of Virginia. She is the transition minister there. Her name is Sarah Brockenbrow. Good morning. Today's Gospel reading begins with a parable about a landowner who plants a vineyard, puts a fence around it, digs a wine press in it, builds a watchtower, and trusts it to tenants, and departs until it is time to collect its produce at the harvest. When the time does come, he sends his servants for his share. The tenants seize the servants and kill them. He sends a second group, more than the first. The tenants kill them rather than give the landowner what belongs to him. Finally, the landowner sends his son to deal with the tenants. But by then they have decided that they can have the son's inheritance if he is out of the way, and they kill him too. The arrangement between a long-distance landlord and tenant farmers would have been basically familiar to listeners in Roman-occupied Palestine. But the violence towards the servants and the son, as well as the entitlement towards the tenants, would have violated all kinds of first-century expectations about working arrangements and understandings of how to treat each other. So it's little surprise that the listening crowd calls for retribution when Jesus asks them how the landlord should respond. To be fair, their actions run contrary to 21st century understandings too, so we might wonder with them what else could be in store for these people who have taken total leave of all their good sense, who have mistaken stewardship for entitlement and exhibited such deep disregard and hostility towards those around them. We might question how the story makes sense at all. Who would think he could kill a stranger to gain an inheritance over which he has no claim? But this strange tale is a parable, which means the storyline points to a greater bottom line. It is the third one Jesus offers the temple leaders who question his authority. In the first, he responds with a question. In the second, he shares a parable about two sons. And finally, he tells this one about a landowner and his tenants. In them all, Jesus has something to say to the temple leaders about who and whose he is. 
Instead of ending the story with a miserable death, a new lease, and more cooperative renters, as the crowd suggests, Jesus recalls Isaiah's description of a vineyard and a new cornerstone. In it, the kingdom of God will be tended by those whose relationships are rightly and faithfully ordered. They will produce the fruits of the kingdom and the cornerstone will remain impervious to what falls against it. By now, the chief priests and Pharisees have realized that the parable is for their benefit and they are furious. It takes an awful lot of courage to shake a finger at your own reflection after all. And admitting to the ways their practice and their priorities have diverged from the care of God's people was more than the chief priests and Pharisees could stand. Somewhere along the way they got confused and thought they were entitled to what they were asked only to tend. Somewhere along the way they stopped pointing to God and began pointing to themselves. It is easy to condemn them for their disordered priorities, but here's the thing. They belong to God, just like the tenants the landlord trusted to tend the vineyard. The tenants were not known vandals or interlopers who jumped a fence. They were just people who lost their perspective and confused stewardship with ownership. The problem was that they did real harm in the process. It's so easy, really, to judge them for that. Unfortunately, it's also painfully easy to relate to them in it. I bet we can all name ways as individuals, as a church, and as a human community, we have forgotten what belongs to God, which is everything. And who is beloved and called to sacred work? That is all of us. And we have done real harm in the process. That loss of perspective and its accompanying injury seems to face us now constantly, demanding that we not only shake a finger at our own reflection, but do something about what we see. When pain and exhaustion in that reflection wear us thin, it can help to look at the things that help us see God around us and in each other. Much of that is internal work, but some of it is highly visible. Since March of 2020, some churches in this diocese have provided care for the children of essential workers. Others continue to expand their feeding ministries and welcome new neighbors into their schools. Congregations are forming partnerships to provide pastoral care, formation offerings, and worship together. And later today, Many of us will take a break from everything but gratitude for our animal companions and bless all of God's creation. All around us, people are pointing to God by building beloved community and making life better for each other. Where disorder persists, and it does, we know that our work is to tend the vineyard anyway. When it feels hard to adapt, we can take heart that we are building on the cornerstone. It is true that a call to seismic change is ringing in our ears. And also, all of human history is change. And God has been making it and us new since the beginning. In this chapter of our story, we have another chance to answer God's call to wholeness. Much of its course depends on whether we are serious about pointing to God even as we go about our ordinary business under our ordinary time constraints, whether we are serious about loosening our grip on the outcome in order to refocus our perspective. We cannot afford not to answer that call. So we have big work to do as a human whole and also Every small thing we do makes a difference. Together, those small acts build big courage, the kind of courage it takes to risk what we think we cannot afford to lose for the thing we really need, to refuse to sell ourselves short of God's promise, and to demand that same glory and abundance and safety for our neighbors. 
in every moment. May we tell the truth so that nothing else is heard and love so that nothing less is felt. May we live so that our arms are full of the fruits of God's kingdom and our backs always rest against its cornerstone. Amen. Please join me in the ancient Christian creed, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grand Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in bo body, mind, or spirit, especially those who uh, suffer from COVID-19. Give them courage and hope to their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we cannot worship you at the altar of your church in the sacrament of your body and blood. Yet in spirit, I would join myself and others with those who in your holy church offer you the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Visit us, I pray, with your mercy, pardon, and blessing, and fill us with faith and love and repentance and so strengthen and sustain us by your grace 
that we may with pure heart and mind follow you, the only God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this family of St. Mary's and for this opportunity in transition. Help us, O oh God, to trust in your wisdom and direction and teach us to recognize the sound of your voice as we take time to listen for your leading. Pour upon us as a discernment group and a church family an abundance of your Holy Spirit that with clear minds and open hearts, we trusting not in our own understanding, recognize the ways we will grow in faith, unity and love as we trust you in this process. We pray also for the person whom we will call to be our next priest in charge. Protect and guide your servant as we find our way to one another. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ surround us and guide us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Well, we have a few announcements this morning. Um, some are very important, um, including um, the fact that you can still register to vote in Virginia until October the 13th. You can register in person or online. So if you haven't registered, please register to vote. Also to notify you that early voting is now going on in Heathsville at the um, registrar's office, which is in the old veterinary uh, building on the main uh, street there. And you can vote um, early until October the 31st. Uh, please consider that or um, just vote, it's important. Also, I'd like to announce that we are still gathering food for, um, for gleaners and blenders, and so if you, um, have food, please bring it by the church. Uh, go in the back door and there is a basket there. Uh, you can leave your offering there. And, uh, and now, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, that was good. <laughs> Does that mean he heard it or he's... <laughs> it's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. It's a sign. Let's try the prayers of the people again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, God, hang in there. Bear with us. Okay. Take it to... Please join me in the prayers of the people. Whoops, maybe I should get my lips fluctuating a little. All right. Take three. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. <laughs> 